fight And we don't have to kill Everybody in the whole wide world Really just needs to chill No, we don't Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Just Chill with Oliver George. If you're watching or listening right now, I'm sure you already know why you're here. That's right. I got to chat with Mr. Kenny Hotz himself. It was an unbelievable experience, and really, this episode was a long time in the making, so I can't wait to share it with you. But before we dig into it, I want to remind you, if you're watching on YouTube right now, maybe it's your first time stopping by the channel, uh, and you would prefer an audio-only experience, you can get that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and other places like that. If you're listening to me on one of those, though, and you didn't realize that there was a visual side to this program, please come check it out on YouTube. While you're doing that, if you would hit me up with the subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to keep growing this channel, reaching more people. So if you've been a part of the journey up to this point, or you're just jumping in now, thank you very much for your support. Finally, if you want to reach out to me, maybe with a cool guest idea or just some general feedback about the show, you can hit me up at justchillpodcasting at gmail.com. And while you're doing that, let me know if you have any interest in one of these cool hall of foil stickers with our logo, and I'll send it to you free of charge. Back to this episode, though, and this amazing guest. Uh, I'm recording this intro actually after the fact because the whole experience was kind of chaotic. I didn't actually know if the interview was going to happen until about an hour or two before it did. Uh, I had been going back and forth with Kenny for quite some time, and about a week prior to the interview, things were looking good. Uh, He sort of loosely committed, but he also threw on the fact that he didn't want to be asked the same old questions. He told me, you know, come up with some unique questions if we're going to do this. Uh, which is fair, but as a big fan, obviously, I felt the pressure from that immediately. And then I got to thinking, well, what would Kenny do? So I took a page from his book, so to speak, and I found a way to cheat. I reached out to a bunch of friends and colleagues of Kenny's and asked if they would send in questions instead of me having to write questions. And uh, it worked out swimmingly. So before I say anything else, I wanted to thank everybody that was a part of this. Anyone who sent in a question, thank you so much. It really did mean a lot to me, and I'm so happy with how this turned out. So, uh, you know, it it was just a crazy day. I was definitely nervous, so keep that in mind, but I did put a lot of work into this. Uh, Even the day of the interview, I was working at the hospital all day. I drove back here on my lunch break to try to finish up some last-minute clips and stuff, and uh, and then Spenny called me, and it was just... It was a nuts day, but uh, I wouldn't have had it any other way. It was so much fun. So I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. And thank you so much for tuning in. It is episode 69. And oh, uh, geez, that's yeah, funny. Coincidentally, hard to find a right guest for 69. But I think we got someone who can fill that slot. Uh, and pardon the pun. We actually had uh, his evil twin partner in crime. You're the evil twin rather. Well, but- I, I wouldn't. I- <laughs> I'm doing this because you bugged me for years to do it. I never go on after Spenny. This is what you it's told me. It's offensive to me to be like, go on second after a second banana. But you just had Humplick, who's a good friend, and Derek Harvey. I was with him today, and uh, and uh, Sabby and some other guys. So it's like, just stop fucking bugging me, and I'll do it. Kenny Hart, Because I'm in Ottawa. Ottawa. Well, I remember you saying you wouldn't go on after Spenny, and it was like, to me, I'm thinking, usually the opener goes on first, and then the headliner comes on. So you could look at it that way, right? Uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> on Carson. Well, okay. I'm in Canada. You make a... Ottawa right now. You make a great point, though, that I've been reaching out to you for a while, yeah. and you've been trolling me pretty much the whole no, time. No, not really. I'm, I, but I think that... that um, you know when you what's the word when you can't my brain's melted when you uh, uh, what commitment deserves um, reward persistence Pers- persistence deserves wo- reward so I think I've landed a lot here I am I don't know if it's worth it you know I don't know why people want me uh, on podcasts you know aside from my monumentally epic legendary career and well, that's what I mean. gorgeous quick wit <laughs> there you go two reasons yeah. right there man but it was either this or sit at Kelsey's so. <laughs> Fuck it. This I beat Kelsey. This one's cheaper. Yes. Um, yeah, you actually, at some point, you said, send me a limo and some scotch, and then maybe. So this is something you sent me on Instagram. So with that in mind. Oh, but I don't even need a limo or scotch. A uh, little scotch would be nice. I got you a Playmobil limo. Oh, that's very nice. I figured you that got to the kids. kids. Yeah. yeah. And then this little bottle of scotch. Chocolate oh. bottle of scotch. Oh, yeah. These are crazy. I wonder if you could actually get wasted out of these i thought that as a kid for sure do you know i had an idea once because do you know that there's alcohol in these 
and they sell them in, in candy stores, which yes. is, it has to be illegal. You're not allowed to sell alcohol in stores where you're not allowed to sell alcohol. So I had this idea for a store once called Rum Balls, and it was a bakery. <laughs> But because in bakeries, you're allowed to put rum in cakes, I thought, why don't I open bakeries all over the country that have rum cakes filled with fucking like <laughs> 10 ounces of rum that you can get like puke wasted off of. Oh, man. And then we would avoid the whole liquor license issue. And then we just started a place called Rum Balls. And just people would go, it'd be like an after hours, after club place. And you go and eat shitty rum balls and get like blasted. I think that's groundbreaking. Yeah, that's what I thought. No one would invest. Um, well, if anyone wants to open rum balls, let me know. You can keep this, but I my dad actually brought a bunch of real scotch. So you know, I'll have a little sip of scotch. I, I like to. I, sadly, I like to have a drink before I go on stage, but I probably Take shouldn't. No thanks. I'll use my shovel. Your dad's gonna love all my uncle jokes. Matt, Matt, and Trey used to call you, uh, me Uncle Kenny. You can make a recommendation oh. for what we should try. Uh. I mean, I'm sure my dad's. What you should all. try is um, getting subscribers. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me. Do see. you like what a PD scotch or? You know, I, I sometimes I, I actually like Dalwinnies. I like the real. Uh, I, don't, yes. I don't like the PD scotch. That was my father's favorite scotch, yeah. Dalwinnie. Yeah, it's very smooth. Yeah, I like. like uh, yeah, but I like. I will have like a Lafroy or like a crazy PD scotch, but. Uh, um, we we'll keep digging. There's I'm, some others. I, I, I'm a Jew, so whatever's most mm. expensive. There's an Irish in there too. Irish is a little. Softer. I like Irish. That's all I drink now is, Bush, is, it, is Bushmills and Jameson. 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 What's this guy? Highland Park. I guess I'll do the. Got a bunch of Lagavulin 16. I'm excited for someone who just starts watching this episode halfway through and just sees like <laughs> tons of liquor bottles. Are you gonna pour this on chicken wings and make me eat it? <laughs> no. You ready to get the gla you got the glasses? Yeah. yeah, I put one here already behind. I just need a straw. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, take, of a I'll, garden take, I'll take a, a lag if you pour me a lag, please. Uh, My dad never drank. It's very strange. I don't drink a lot, but... Never drank, never had a cigarette, extremely straight, died at 72. Like His brother walked around with a... It's the cigar one, it's, it's and the a salami, just put back. A oh, salami in his pocket. No, nope, not that one. Lived oh, this years guy. longer. Okay, yeah. my bad. There. Are you drinking what I'm drinking? Yeah, oh yeah, I like lag. Yeah. Well, I feel like I'm gonna lag Lafroy. You know, yeah. I am not really a huge Scotch guy, but I'll try it. If Kenny's here, I'm gonna drink them. Well, that's kind of peaty. Yeah, too peaty for your. No, taste. no, fuck. Oh, you like it that way? No, I, I actually don't. But I, I don't mind if I'm just sipping it without. If I'm sipping it without clamato juice, I don't mind the peaty stuff. Okay. Well, I'm that was glad a joke. To... That was a joke. Yeah, your dad, was your dad laughed. Yeah. Sorry, man. Your I'm super nervous. It. I'm sure some people already. It's okay, uh, have relax. Gathered it's that. fine. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. You're, uh, you're, you're too. Oh yeah. Sorry. I was gonna come give this. You're too freaked out. Yeah. It's okay. Well, I'm an anxious dude. I'm, ju I'm a, I'm, I'm kind of like a normal person. Well, you always seem like a guy who's probably got a heart of gold. I do. I'm, six, I'm super nice. I'm. Chill, I'm really not that famous. I, 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 I find it I find it strange that people think I'm so famous when I see them on the street and stuff because oh, I've kind of be I've kind of stayed out of the limelight. Kind of, you know, I'm like the, like Canada Sid Barrett kind of. I just kind of I don't know. Like man. I only do certain like the best things intermittently over. Yeah, you know. you're not like uh, too much in people's faces all yeah. the time. But I think you're famous. I think all my yeah. friends know who you are. For yeah. Sure. Well, in Canada, fuck, who's not famous? Jesus Christ. I mean, you guys had, like, a pretty big audience down in the States, too. How was the U.S. tour you guys just did? That was the first time you ever went down there, right? It was the first time we went down there because Spenny, who um, um, is a father that never paid child support for his kids, <laughs> or or um, was, you know, he did, but he, he was charged too much. He went through a horrible divorce. The the um, they took his passport and his driver's license, everything. Oh, shit. So I couldn't go to the states, and I would have gone to the states alone. And and I I go, I love the states. I'd go intermittently, but um, not to tour. Yeah. But so we finally got his passport back after like twenty years of being a deadbeat dad, and <laughs> and um, and we went. And so we go uh, four shows. They all sold out. It was really weird because we haven't been on TV in ten years, and. Two of the four shows, Spenny gets so blind wasted that he basically ruins the meet and greet with the fans. <laughs> like, 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 
Bukowski wasted. Like like blind, like ambulance wasted. Oh my God. Yeah. Incapacitated. Incapacitated. But we met, met Matt and Trey the first time and we went out with him one night. Spenny got so fucked up that he basically got thrown out of the restaurant we were in and ended up in a bus shelter like yeah <laughs> like it's sad and crazy like he's a real addict he's a really he, he's a really fucked up dark broken person but it takes a person like that to you know make a show like Kenny versus Spenny that's that's why it's so unique because it's actually real and we're not actors yeah so when you fuck with somebody like that, it becomes truly an incredible art piece, a yeah. piece of art yeah. because that stuff migrates the, through the screen. And you know that, you know, even though people said, did you really dose some acid? You know, the, the guy's on acid. <laughs> you can tell. You Bradley can't fake Cooper that can't act like that. <laughs> like you can, you know, he's like a broken man on acid. And that's why it's so crazy. That's why the show's so crazy because it's so real. It really and home. what happened was I was like, oh, great, Spenny, you ruined our chance with Matt and Trey. Now we'll never see him again. But what happened was they loved it so much. They were so impressed by how real and fucked up Spenny <laughs> was that, you know, they invited me to do South Park and I became very close with with them and Matt especially and wow that's awesome and all because Spenny you know lost his shit and like honestly almost died wow. Brand, when I interviewed uh, Brandon Bird he told me a story about bringing Kenny to a casino or Spenny rather to a casino and uh, he got so blind drunk that they were like pushing him around in a wheelchair and Brandon was letting people like take pictures with them weekend at Bernie style that just happened a couple nights ago Cornwall yeah in Cornwall he yeah, got so Spenny drunk that. that he kicked a fan <laughs> Kicked a fan? Yeah, yeah. He's he, he, some drunk fan, some idiot, but they're both idiots. And, <laughs> and you're not allowed to get that way. So he came to my room at 7 a.m. the next day. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Because he knows. I Like, I don't have to do this. You know, I'm on the brink of going out solo, which I never really wanted to do because I just like to have fun and go out with friends yeah. and hang out. And, you know, and uh, but my dream is to be like a solo stand-up comedian. Really? Well, oh, sure. Who's it? Awesome. Yeah, it'd be awesome, and I think I could do it. Um, and I have the audience for it, and yeah. I, I, it'd be a lot of fun. But you could land just for laughs or something. Yeah, my I was on the board there. Like I can do that anytime. I could make a phone call and do you know um, solo shows. Luckily, I, I just I, I just don't really want to because it, it's it's just a big commitment, and and I, I'm just not into money that much. Like it, it's. I don't understand how people who who have cash work or need to work, you know, like I, I, I'm, I'm on the brink of throwing on a fucking moo moo and just like <laughs> eating dolphin faces and drinking <laughs> your dad's scotch. Dolphin. Like that's all I want to do is eat endangered oh. animals and, and get fat. Oh man. I'm fat. Fuck. Hey man, you look good to me. Yeah. Well, of course I look good. Aging well. I, uh, I, well, we're all fat. We've been sitting at home in a plague for True, yeah, two pandemic. years, eating and drinking. Everyone's drinking every day. Everyone's eating fucking Walmart lasagnas. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> quarantine 15, they call it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's bad. I'll lose it eventually. If this thing ever goes away, who knows? Well, man, uh, thank you so much for coming. And I do have one more kind of surprise here that I hope you're going to enjoy. Spenny uh, told me, Sp Spenny is oh, such a slimy Spenny, douche. He told me all your surprises. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, he told me Brezen's calling and all of this stuff. He is a scummy loser. He, that's what a rat he is. Like the fact that you are stupid enough to tell him secrets. He called me the second after you wrote, hey, this guy wants me to m make questions for you. Like, is that oh, okay? Are you like, you like, are, how stupid? are you that you would believe that guy or trust him with anything okay but you, you don't should know, be ashamed of yourself you don't know how successful i was in getting people though right no no idea okay oh, but which do? is nice I, I it makes me uh, kind of uncomfortable that people would waste their time to <laughs> be on some you know podcast and how many subscribers do you have uh like a thousand and forty something okay well it's yeah. not much. you're calling you know yeah i Anyways. don't know man these are most of these are past guests so i guess they had a good time oh, okay, you know yeah. some of them um, anyways, yeah. So Sebi Humplick the and uh, <laughs> Breslin are on your show. Basically, have four past guests have <laughs> agreed. Oh, that's really hard getting their emails. Jug going into your contact <laughs> sheet must have been a real. Breslin's bitch. never been on my show. 
Um, anyways, the reason I did this is because Kenny had said, if I'm going to come on, or, uh, you better be amazing. I don't want to be asked the same question. So I pulled a Kenny. I didn't I, say you got better be amazing. I just said, I cannot listen. Say, well, I said, you can't listen to <laughs> the same questions and you should probably do something you know, special for yeah. your fans. You know, I thought the, the KVS fans would enjoy this. So nevertheless, I figured this was a cheat to circumvent that pressure. Now they're not my questions. Mm -hmm. I'm just the curator of questions. So let's get into the questions sure. and we'll start off with Mr. Glenn Humpling. Uh, hey, who, Ken. oh, sorry. Yeah, do it. Hey, Kenny, Glenn here. I've got uh, three questions for you today. Question number one, as a fellow parent in his fifties, I'm wondering uh, what the hell were you thinking having three kids in your fifties? Like, how are you still alive? I can barely handle one. How, how are you dealing with three? Oh fuck! It's overwhelming. I have no idea what happened. I I I, I did a lot of uh, ramming. I was single for a while. I was famous. I was living in L.A. for ten years, and uh, you know it's dark. You, you never you don't really want to bone a bunch of <laughs> skanks <laughs> and do bumps and party and have fun with celebrities and <laughs> um. I, no, you know, I like being a dad. I come from a very close, functional family. I love kids in a different way than Spencer. But, um, uh, yeah, listen, I'm going to be 55. In 10 years, I'm going to be basically, you know, a fucking minion in a wheelchair. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> That's my dad's age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, it just time flies and I did enough time sitting on my ass doing nothing. It was like, I, you know, I sat and played video games for 10, 20 years. You got to go through chapters in your life. And I, I felt like this is going to be like Bilbo Baggins. Like I'm going to do something that I never thought in a million years I would ever do in my life. And so here I am. Yeah, That's I, a lot. I think a lot of people probably wouldn't envision you maybe as the, the dad figure just because of what they've seen on KBS. But like you say, people change, people grow. Yeah, but I, I had an incredible father. Uh, unlike Spencer's father <laughs> and um, my parents weren't divorced unlike Spencer's family. And I come from a loving uh, family with siblings, unlike Spencer's family who basically they had him and, you know, tried to pay the doctor for an abortion after <laughs> afterwards. Um, so, so yeah, I came, had a very good family life and I, I left Los Angeles, you know, after being there alone in a fucking, you know, garage for five years in the back of a house with nothing you know you kind of for me i'm also a beatles guy and i love love and i love yeah man like i love m my kids so it's nice for me to have them i've had a lot of friends who are super fucking douchey sycophant losers that i had to ditch and to ha create your own friends yeah. that like going for dim sum and eating the shit you like and or going for you know weird african food uh is fun for me and i just i i just like having friends and and these are the best these kids are the best friends i've ever had well and having uh, adult friends that also have kids is definitely huge i we don't i don't really i i have some but the plagues really you know True. interrupted everything like for two years i've got a two-year-old my my kids one of my kids has, hasn't even seen another person never lived in a maskless world yeah 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 I, our youngest is four and a half either and... is spencer by the way <laughs> or only in playgrounds <laughs> <laughs> Spencer loves masks. Oh yeah, yeah. He doesn't get pulled over for wearing them anymore. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, you want to throw to the next Glenn one? This is a. He's referencing a mutual friend of yours that he told me you would know who this person is. Yeah, I know who. I it love is. Glenn. I have, Glenn is first of all, Tom and Glenn and Derek Harvey. These guys are the reasons why I'm sitting here right now. The Tom Green Show to me was one of the greatest canadian television shows of all time yeah man revolutionary uh, absurd theater like a, the most incredible show uh, i'm actually going to drive to tom's house tomorrow he moved oh, right uh, on. outside of ottawa yeah um and uh, don't Oz say where he had me edit that no out no, no I'm, not, episode. I'm not but uh yeah so i'm gonna go see his place I hope he, he's probably like Phil Spector. He's probably not going to let me leave. <laughs> he's like <laughs> alone 5,000 miles from any oh, supermarket. Man. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't know Tom well. I've talked to him through email and he's been a nice guy, but Glenn was a complete sweetheart. Yeah, I love Glenn. Even after the pod, we were, we've been chatting on Messenger and stuff. Yeah. He's just I, met, cool I met Tom. We had a movie in 
uh, Toronto Film Fest in 97 and I bumped into Tom after that, like that night. And then him and I went out and got blasted. And then when I was in LA in 98, 99, uh, Glenn came to my, my Venice Beach, you know, bungalow garage and we hung out as well. Yeah, he had actually told me to ask you. Yeah. Um, where the fuck is but it? But to me, the, he was like, oh, it's like, oh my God, it's Glenn Humplick. Like, I am so good at pretending, you know, m my my celebrity friends are losers when <laughs> to me, they're just like, I'm such a huge star fucker. You know, hang with Matt and Trey or Joni Mitchell or, you know, uh, whoever. Uh, you still get starstruck, you're saying, yeah? Well, for sure. Yeah. I have to, I'm, I'm like an expert at pretending that, I, that I'm cool and I don't really care. Just well, go sit on the couch. and. You mentioned Venice, and Glenn said uh, the best Mexican food in Los Angeles is Baja Cantina. Is that true or false? He wanted you to verify whether you agreed. Well, getting advice of where the best food in the world from um, from someone who comes from Ottawa is probably <laughs> a not not a good idea. He said you guys used to meet there and uh, and have yeah. food together. Yeah, yeah, but you know it's the L.A. Mexican like the Mexican Mexicans good. The American Mexicans great, but it's shit. It's like it's like a yeah, it's RC like cheese, yeah, <laughs> cheese and diarrhea and, and it's so delicious, but it's the cardiac plate smash. -all. Not worth it on the way out. Yeah. Here, you guys are all you know poutine. Like I I love poutine, but Spenny loves teen poo. <laughs> Oh, good God. All right, throw to the next one. Okay. So this is from the mutual friend. Uh, question number two is actually uh, regarding a story that was shared with me from a mutual friend who lives here in Ottawa, uh, who was at your place, who used to uh, live at your place on occasion. <laughs> and what he tells me is you used to live across from an apartment or something like that where a guy used to be a chronic masturbator and you would watch him. Um, so I'm not sure if, if this story is actually true because our, our teller, our, uh, our mutual friend is a, a teller of tall tales at times, let's just say. So I just want a confirmation about you liking to watch a chronic masturbator. I <laughs> did not live, the, the chronic masturbator did, was, did not live across the street for me. Smenny was living in my basement for a bit <laughs> and it's impossible not to watch him when he's standing in front of you while you're sleeping, putting lip gloss on your mouth and moaning. Oh my God. I knew I was going to be laughing my ass off during this. Oh God. Do you want to just go no, to the next well, I had a building uh, that, and one of the, it was like facing all of these windows and yeah, there's some crazy guy masturbating and we would whip like snowballs at him. But uh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the story then. Yeah, right on. Play the next it. one. And uh, three, third question is uh, about that mutual friend of ours. He won't be at your show here in Ottawa this weekend because he's unvaxxed and he's not allowed to go in. So I was just wondering how that makes you feel. And, uh, and uh, because our friend is really just stubborn at this point. That's it. Thanks. Um, he's not coming, but his kid is coming. Oh yeah. And, uh, um, at this point, you know, I don't even fucking care anymore. Get a vaccine. Don't get a vaccine. I, I think there's too many people in the world. We need like a whole bunch of them to die. <laughs> Might as well start with the old people so we can get their houses and cottages. But, um, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of shitty people in the world. The fucking world is ending. There is a 220 uh mile long one mile wide tornado in the states oh yeah yesterday like where like is this the new normal like we are fu like are we fucked i don't know this may it, it may not be but but uh no, but like bc hit but the world the then. economy is not going to be the world economy is not going to be able to maintain you know uh 60 foot floods and yeah. 200 you know Constant mile an hour calamity. tsunamis and 300 mile long tornadoes which means that zombie land is coming and we're all gonna fucking die <laughs> because uh a 200 mile a 200 mile long one mile thick tornado going through the american Midwest heartland or, yeah. uh you can't how are you gonna pay for this shit
Yeah. Well, and like I was saying, BC had the record heat and yeah, 151 degrees like, in like BC. I've been looking for a house in Victoria for 10 years. Like I'm not fucking moving there now. No, old people were dropping like flies. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary shit, man. It is crazy. Um, well that means, but, but you know, we've, we've, uh, we've had some good, we've had some good summers. So yeah, man, <laughs> it's their problem now. Hey, you're here right now. This is bucket list yeah. shit for me. Drinking scotch with Kenny yeah, Hots. Fucking you. A. Um, the mutual friend apparently had a question. Mm-hmm. I, I'm assuming you know who it is. So uh, he said, how rich are you anyway? Um, I would never ask Well, he goes through various phases of wealth, but I've had, you know, three, four TV shows. Uh, two or three of them were on, you know, for many years, somewhere on TV in the States. And when you, get, you know, luckily when you have a show, you know, there's a lot of cash comes with it. Thank God. You I've know? heard you make good investments though. I did. Yeah. Yeah. But I was so broke and destitute that I, and my family was so poor and I lived in one of the most affluent neighborhoods in Canada and we were so fucking broke mm. and lost our house in like so the like eight, early eighties. Yeah. So we're always yeah. poor. So, uh, that's why I was so scared about being poor. Which is one of the reasons why I was like a weed dealer when I was like a little kid, you know, just to, you know, so I, I actually could pay my parents rent, give them money and Damn. give my mom money. That's some 50 cents. Yeah. Shit. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, listen, I, I could, I'm fine now and I made a lot of money, but it could all go to shit. My fucking crypto crashed today. Oh yeah. My dad's but, into the crypto. What's yours? X, Y, O. Your dad's into the crypt. <laughs> Yeah, he's in the crypt. So. Yeah, <laughs> one toe in the crypt. He's got the blue shirt, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, um, okay. Well, the next guest actually was speaking about you investing. Well, yeah. The next person who had a question for you is somebody that you co-own a business with, uh, someone who's been on my show, Mr. Stefan Brogren. Yeah. Who I remember after he was on my show, I messaged you and you said, uh, "Oh God, snake, yeesh." In that case, I'm out. <laughs> so that's what I mean by the trolling. Um, but yeah, let's play that one. Hey, Oliver, it's Stefan Brogan here. Uh, so you have Kenny Hotz in the show. Have fun. Really, have fun. Uh, you probably know this. I think we might have talked about it already. That Kenny and I are partners in a bar called The Dog and Bear. We've been friends for a lot of years. Um, I even uh, cast him in an episode of Degrassi that I directed him in. Um, here's a question for you. Maybe you can ask Kenny, why was his role, which was probably going to be about three or four minutes of screen time, cut to... 10 seconds in Degrassi Takes Manhattan. It was a two-hour TV movie, um, and uh, he played a uh, sort of a record dealer in Central Park. Uh, Maybe he can answer the question, why was he cut from five minutes to uh, mostly, I think, about 10 to 15 seconds of screen time? The answer is the network found his performance so disturbing I thought I was supposed to answer this. They asked to have it cut out. 100% now, a Kenny Hotz moment. It, it was a ter- it was terrible. <laughs> and if you have the privilege of having me in your show, uh, use it. So it, it's so, it's so. What did you do? It, nothing. I, I, I licked, <laughs> I, I was cleaning a record and I used my tongue to clean, lick it and clean. And then I wiped and they're like, oh, that's so disturbing. It was too sultry. Canadian de- Degrassi. Oh my god yeah they should be smoking the grassy not watching the grassy <laughs> all right well but so. it was nice for stephanie to use me and um i i really don't like doing cameos you know i i had the uh, opportunity when i lived in the states to do a lot more maybe tv and movies and stuff but i just i wasn't i i i could i couldn't really do it i wasn't i, I didn't i i love cinema is so much and actors so much and Hollywood so much that I always felt like I wasn't um, um, good enough. Wow, really? To be a part of it. But you made Sadly. films. But your films yeah. were very like. When uh, I do my own stuff, I, I I can do it. When I'm the boss, yeah, I'll do whatever the fuck I want, and I'll actually, um, you know, I, I like doing it and I feel comfortable. But when I've, you know, if I'm sitting in front of it like Kevin Smith or some yeah, director, yeah. different story with like you know. 35 or 70s and you know and just go go and you're like Oof, you know I, I just don't like the pressure yeah your films are very gonzo style like i just watched the the papal chase yeah uh, glenn turned me on to that and that was a really good flick yeah that that i i did for you know 100 bucks over really yeah Man. five or seven days i think i was 
broke in LA and I don't maybe a couple grand. It's pretty Sebi's intense. Sebi's first movie. I made Sebi, Sebi shoot. It was his first flick and it, it was great. It's scary shit though. There was like snipers. You guys were constantly being chased. Yeah. So I wanted to actually ask you if I can throw one of my questions is you seem to always mix art with thrill seeking. And I wanted to know what you identified with first being an artist or a thrill seeker. Well, it's not really thrill seeking. It's just, it's just, you know, doing it you know like i know there's like this it's to sound stupid but there's this future kenny who's going to be sitting in an edit suite having to watch previous kenny's work and future kenny's gonna fucking be so mad at past kenny if he doesn't give future kenny the goods to cut yeah. so i feel like oh shit there, like there's gonna be me in the future sitting there and be so mad at myself if i don't you know go crazy and produce what i want mm. You know, and I did this and, and and it's not really, it's really just about, you know, angst or, you know, not even, you know, I, like not doing something for the sake of actually doing it, just doing it because you're, you're just kind of like a lovable gonzo journalist. I, I see myself more as a journalist than, than a troll or anything else. Yeah. And with a responsibility to get the truth or an answer with a high moral code. So that's why I actually do it. Like when I do the, the, the Pope thing, it's all about being a journalist. I'm a fucking journalist. Fuck you. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get this story, you know? And, uh, and I did this thing for Trump, which I, which I just, advice, which I liked. Yeah. And, um, that's hilarious. Yeah, and I go on stage at Rubio and probably almost get arrested. And uh, they're okay, like, some oh, people want to kick your ass. Yeah, and Spike Jones gave me the gig, and uh, you know, nothing happened. Got buried. Like, what more am I supposed to do? I, you know, I do all this stuff, which I think is amazing, and then gets buried and dies, and and nothing happens with it. And you just get so tired, like every Ooh. fucking time doing like. You know all this stuff which kills you you know and each one of these are your are your children your babies yeah. and you're fucking killing yourself to do it and for what no broadcaster likes it sure the fans love it and i love it but you know after a while it's just like oh fuck like how, how much of this shit do i have to just really guts do you a bit yeah yeah fuck, man. and it's dangerous as fuck well yeah walking a stuff. group of like you know crazies or freaks dressed as satan in a crowd of like two million Super people, Christian. like oh my yeah. god! And the other thing too, you know, I was proud of myself. I don't think anyone was doing that back then. No. You know, there was no Borat, there was no like Super Size Me or any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so yeah, I, I, I I'm happy. I, you know, my brother says I have Van Gogh syndrome, and Van Gogh and Mozart, these are like the greatest artists in the world that die in pauper pits covered Penny in list. limestone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, which isn't that bad, but you know, some recognition would be nice, you know, to not get a, a Gemini or Canadian screen <laughs> award when you're like the only show in a hundred <laughs> years to be on comedy central in America, Canadian show. And for them to be giving fucking awards to, to schmoes who've done nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? After being in the, in, the, in, in the business for, you know, I started making movies in 1972. Jesus. Fucking NFB. Like, fuck. Seriously. Can I have, like, uh, an award, please? Like, yeah. Honestly. We have, like, fans in Namibia. We've been promoting <laughs> Canadian comedy internationally and globally under the radar of the industry for a very long time. You did get something from the Governor General, though, didn't you? No, some fan, some fan uh, <laughs> applied for an award for me. And I don't know. Listen, so if there's any fans out there... I want every award. I want you to, and I'll even pay for it if you get it. I want Japanese awards for ambassadorships. I want Save the Children awards for children I've saved. Number one, do everything list. you can to infiltrate that shitty internet with me and make me look like a fucking god. <laughs> and I will, and that's how you can reward me. That's how you can reward me for the millions of hours I've spent trying to entertain you. Well, I'm going to try to entertain you with some more All questions. Right. Um, Sebi is the one we're going to get to first. But before we get to the people from the show, I want to point out that I tried calling Goldfield. So if you can play the Goldfield phone call, it didn't okay, go I don't know. I, well. I got a show start. It's taking forever. Oh, no, no, sorry, no, nothing personal. No, it's no, totally no, no. fine. I'll roll through it. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's just it's me. I'm blabbing. Oh, you, yeah, one more time. There you go. Hello, good evening, Valley Girls. Hi, Dr. Goldfield? Yes. 
Hi, I'm what? calling you because I'm actually doing an interview with uh, Kenny Hotz tomorrow. And I was hoping maybe you would have a question for him that I could play him so uh, you could ask him a question. No, hopefully not. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no problem. Thank you. Thanks. Have a nice night. <laughs> well, that didn't work. Yeah, he got mad because I, I told him well, we were filming him and I said that you, is it true that you sewed dog faces on the American pilots during the Korean War? <laughs> Or something like that. He got he got upset. <laughs> that was recent. But no, no, no. This is during the show. But I had, you know, it was kind of everything was kind of winding down anyhow. So yeah, I had no idea how that was going to go. I just figured I'd take yeah. a shot in the dark. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen him since the show. Oh, really? Yeah. But there's like kids from like you know Hamburg that go in and do pictures with them. And yeah, stuff. I see that all yeah. the time. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get to Sebi. We'll blast through these then. That's okay. I'm sorry. I just Kenny. Uh, oh, not even. Kenny's a music aficionado. I don't think people realize how big a role music plays in KVS. I want to hear about some of the background there. Season to season, there's like a psychedelic season. There's the Celtic Frost inspiration behind the KVS theme song. Let's do a deep dive on that shit. Yeah, I have thousands of records. In fact, Sebastian's father was my best friend. And he kind of got, he like, I was always into music, but he's the guy that I would smoke pounds of weed with and listen to, like, you know, Mahler and, and you know, Ligeti and Pierre Henry and, like, the craziest, uh, most insane music. And so uh, I kind of got my, built my doctorate in, in, in a very eclectic music taste. And, um, yeah, and, and, my favorite songs like the opening panels of the show i kind of emulated those songs and put them into the into the episode so you know it's very kubrickian and i thought that that having you know something as stupid as you know spenny trying to eat cat food <laughs> against you know <laughs> wagner's you know seventh oh, it was yeah. just just increase the epic you know uh, you know ridiculousness of of you know the absurdity, the absurdity yeah. of yeah, the, yeah. the show. So yeah, I, I I have a lot of records, and I I really listen to a lot of fucking music. And you had a lot of input on the soundtrack for KBS. So. I did everything, of everything. course. Okay. I uh, nobody had any input but There's me, no spenny, really. Spenny yeah, spenny input. No, Sebby, me and Sebby really were the only people that actually did anything. Se spenny was Spenny. I say I was like filming Mutual of Omaha, like like you know Earth, where we would just film him you know, reacting to being, you know, beaten up by, by, you know, leather men or, or sucking off trannies or whatever, or doing acid, you know, we had to come up with all of the stuff that we had to come up with and, 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 and do. Um, but yeah, in terms of music and all that, I basically did all that stuff. Damn. Yeah. All right. Let's go to number two. We'll keep it rolling. We used to send fatter edits into the broadcaster. Kenny would leave in some of the craziest shit knowing that it was going to get kibosh but but with the the strategy to use those as bargaining chips to keep other content in because i think they were like well we want these three things out and it's like well i'll take these two things out and keep that but i also know some of those crazy moments made it through uh and kenny being like i have no idea how they didn't flag that like no notes in that episode or whatever what were some of those moments um what made it through that shocked kenny and uh, what didn't make it through that the world has never seen? Basically, almost everything made it through. There was really one, only one thing that really offended them so much. But, but yeah, almost everything made it through. And I was really good at manipulating their, their you know, um, notes, which were, were, which were, you know, pretty shitty mostly. You know, it's like, I, you know, I've seen every fucking Tarkovsky movie. Don't tell me about, like... <laughs> you know the the viewers not getting this idea across in this okay fine i'll 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 see if there's another way that i said it even though there isn't but uh yeah everyone's they were just trying to put their finger on it but uh, executives always basically ruin everything you have you know yeah. so there are instances and we did have some good executives that did help us and it's hard to differentiate between an idea getting across in your brain and it relating to the audience so sometimes they're like oh oh yeah okay good i they forgot that that was this so i just put in something to remind them that, that was that or, or or whatever but but in the end 
if they ever wanted anything, I would just say, fuck you, I'm an artist, I'm making these choices because the government of Canada funds your art and I'm an artist and th it's their job to show my art, not their job to tell me how to make it. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of just, from the very early on, just didn't take any shit or listen to anybody and it kind of worked. Hey, you blazed your own trail. Yeah, I blazed my own trail and I, you know, it's just really a test to see, oh, can I do this? And yeah, nobody ever really bugged me. Well, and it wasn't spending. I did all of that. I went to the broadcaster. I was the guy that fought with them when that when um, the the transvestite when I showed her penis. Yeah, they said you can't do that. And I said fuck you. You guys are homophobic, and mm. that is totally racist. And and I said I'm showing it. Fuck you. You blur it. I'm not blurring it on my master. And they showed it. They said you cannot smoke weed on television. Film. Like, oh, you you can only show, like, afterwards, like, smoke coming out. Someday. Yeah. And Sebi and I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's film it. And you did a PSA. initially, like, an idiot, I was like, yeah, oh, shit. I can't believe we can't film it. And it was like, later, we're like, oh, of course we're going to fucking film it. And we filmed it and all made it in. Nice. We might have been the first guys to smoke weed on TV. That's in I Canada, so, yeah. I don't know. On CBC? For, or no, it was oh, Showcase. Anywhere. Yeah. Anywhere. And the first guys to drink beer when we did, who could drink more beer? They yeah. weren't even, they were putting beers up to people's lips in American beer commercials and not drinking Just it. feigning it, yeah. Yeah, and then, and you know, I did the first intervention that probably started intervention, you know, spending being wasted. I bring in the true. intervention. <laughs> this is years before intervention. Yeah. So, CLC, and I also yeah. heard I also heard a lot of people said, "Well, Kenny Spenny did that," and they're like, "Well, you can't do that." <laughs> so, uh, but we shit. got lucky. But you know that came from Tom, Tom Green doing things that weren't necessarily crass, but absurd and didn't really make sense to people. Then just bizarre, yeah. just was was bizarre enough so that an, a, a broadcaster wouldn't understand that, but he was still allowed to show it. Yeah, yeah. Whereas we were gross, he wasn't. Yeah, he so, wasn't as depraved. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was more depraved because he was. It was so. But it wasn't as obvious. Su such a psychotic, yeah, uh, absurd, you know, mess. Yeah, that worked. It looked like an insane. Yeah, it was here. insane. Yeah, uh, we were just you know gross and and crazy and we were just kind of dicks. Different vibes for Different sure. Different vibes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, the third question from Sebi, actually, I'm very curious about because I didn't know this was a thing. All right, the last Bobby film. Where is that at? Will we ever see this masterpiece? I want to hear about this. I don't know what the last Bobby film is. The Lost Bobby film? Oh, Lost Bobby yeah, yeah, film. He seems to think oh, there was a movie that Spenny kind of made. He would, Spenny would make these movies. In fact, I would go out and make them for him because he didn't know how to fucking, he didn't do any technical anything. And, um, and I don't know he made one about Bobby Sp being a loser and looking for potato chips and playing lottery tickets. I don't know if that. that, that Does anybody have do with this me. footage? No, nah, it wasn't that great. Oh right. Like well. uh, Spenny thinks Bobby is way more better than he is, and I do love Bobby, but um, it's, I have to move on. Uh, okay. Even though if I did win a billion dollars, I would probably give him like a million dollars and film him just like you know being himself. being a bloated. <laughs> dead corpse like in macau this could not be a better segue to bobby's question hey kenny uncle bobby here hope you're doing okay i'm doing good myself thank you quick question for you you're basically about the same weight you were in high school what's your secret and is there any hope for someone like me who struggles with weight thank you very much uh, he doesn't struggle with weight he's always been a fat piece of shit <laughs> and i'm so fat honestly i gotta do something I, I, I'm, I, I've always been pretty skinny, but honestly with the kids and just being at home for two years, yeah, eating their peanut butter crusts and like not being able to run to supermarkets. This was from last year, but, um, and then, you know, just enjoying life. Like, yeah. honestly, like, you know, finally after being, you know, destitute, you know, screwing ugly Jewish broads in LA. <laughs> so for a fucking Carl's Jr., you know, my joy, I love food. I enjoy eating food. Now I have the money to eat food. What am, like, why do I have to look fucking skinny? I'm going to be 60 soon. Like, I'm basically, Spenny's already 60. I This year, I think, I'm going to be 55. Like, like, can I enjoy my fucking life? And, yeah, it's and eat fucking, fucking foie gras and gummy bears, even though I don't. And I eat very healthy. I don't eat any really fried shit or, or, do you or sugar. Well, exercise. No, no, I don't like exercise, but I, I walk a lot and I have kids, you know, so you're, you're fucking, you know, 
Roomba. You're tidying all yeah, the time. Definitely running around. Pockets look like fucking. And you, you, well, we were talking about how you have bags. dogs too before we I got started. dogs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've all you know. I'm, I, I'm not stupid enough to like exercise like an idiot, like on a Peloton. <laughs> like who wants a fucking Peloton? But you know, I yeah, I walk. You know, I I I I, I don't park next to the fucking door. I I you know I I can I can walk. I, I like walking. I walked I walked three kilometers to a restaurant yesterday in Montreal. Nice. Yeah, and I I had a reservation for it online. It's a super expensive restaurant because I'm away and I'm making some cash on tour, and I like to spend my you know, I like to spend my cuisine, money. I'm, I'm into yeah. not even fine cuisine. I had two Schwartz's sandwich yesterday it's in the same fucking day. And I had one at 10 a.m. and then I had one at 11 o'clock at night. Two fatty pastrami sandwiches because there's no pastrami in Toronto, and I'm a Jew. So so, <laughs> but I I I I like took me like you know a week to at least find one amazing restaurant to go to in montreal i make a reservation i i, I i'm like you know what i'm fat I, I, i'm gonna eat fucking three thousand calories like you know who knows what um you know lizard tail and and uh you know um riet and have you know a few glasses of rosé i walk up to this fucking restaurant it's closed oh shit and i'm stuck in, like, why would they accept your reservation i don't know well, who's closed on Saturday night? Yeah, really. Like, oh, we we, we haven't been able to 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 work or 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 pay our bills for two years, and and like Saturday, like yeah, yeah, and and like okay, so why are you close Saturday night? Everyone's complaining that their business is going under. Like, if I had a fucking restaurant, which I do, luckily, even though I'm I'm you know just a silent partner, just be open all the time. Yeah, really. Yeah, like who cares? Maybe they don't have the staff. Uh, well, um, yeah, I don't know. No one has the staff. That no one has the staff the in right the world now. anymore. Yeah, it's yeah. the big quit or whatever. Well, you have the staff Saturday night, and you have yeah. the staff if you're you're making two, three, four hundred bucks on tips every night. Then you have the staff. You you don't have the staff the staff if you're working in Kush Tard at fucking three a.m. Yeah, you gotta promote properly. I guess is the real deal. Yeah, I don't know. I everyone's fucked. This is so crazy. It's such a weird evolution it's of, surreal yeah yeah it's it's pretty crazy is there any food you wouldn't eat i wanted to ask that or things you hate like yeah yeah we all hate stuff you know i don't like uh um yeah i, I don't know like it, it depends like because i've seen you eat gross shit on canvas yeah you seem to handle it like a yeah joke. i've eaten you know cow put, tongue and raw shit. placenta and you know <laughs> human humans yeah you ate humans i, in I, the I ate a person will, I yeah. Ate humans. yeah i don't Good i don't Lord. know it doesn't really freak me out that much. <laughs> um, okay, well, the next one is from. I'm not really into like you know skittles on bear paws, you, you know, like on on that, combos uh, on like you know beaver tails and skittles. Like Ooh. I don't really like you know spring Kool Aid sprinkled on. What's wrong with a beaver cream? tail already? Just the way it is, you know. Well, yeah, it's just fried bread with cinnamon though. Like the people who add it's all the okay. Shit, I like it. I know what it tastes like. Yeah. Like if I was going to eat that, I'd rather just have like a Kit Kat or coffee crisp or something. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Um, all right. The next one is from uh, the founder of Yuck Yucks, Mr. Mark Breslin, who was nice enough to send one. Very nice. Hi, it's Mark Breslin. Here's a question for Kenny that he's probably rarely asked. Why are there so few Jews on that show? Oh, and if I'm wrong and there are, doesn't that prove that Jews run Hollywood? You ask him that. So that's what he gave me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Well, listen, if uh, Jews ran Hollywood, I'd be there right now. I think they do. But but um, that's the conspiracy now. Yeah, well, went on and all that shit. Listen, um, I, I don't even know what the question was, but I, I love know. Mark. Mark was one of those guys when we were little thirteen-year-old kids sneaking into Yuck Yucks. He had gingerbread men and women that had little penises and boobs <laughs> on them. And Mark, for Spenny and I, are like all roads lead to Mark. He is one of the quintessential mm -hmm. original comedy guys who, again, doesn't even get. The I think he just got uh, he just got the Order of Canada. Oh yeah, um, recently I believe yeah. I heard that too. Which yeah. I've been trying to get him for years. Uh, maybe I even instigated. I don't even know. But uh, I I I I had a friend high up there that was asking, saying, "Mark deserves it. Yeah. The guy fucking created comedy in Canada. Yeah. You know, he, he made an uh, an industry. It's still going to this day. Yeah, yeah. we need it too. All right, we should get it too. You, you what, Kenny? I Frank? would love the Order of Canada. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I like handicap parking. Anything, I'll take it. <laughs> the I love, I love, I, I love being acknowledged for anything. I love awards and 
I don't have an award for you, unfortunately. No, no, that's okay. Best guest ever. I'm used to not having them, but I do. of course I like them. Um, the last person I got clips from is uh, not someone who was on the show, but a friend of yours who actually says uh, he's a best friend of yours. And he says, he has been so kind and generous to me, a side you don't often see. Do you know who this is? Everybody, all my friends. I'm very generous, generous to all my friends. You don't have a guess, though, for no. who this would be? It's actually uh, the brother of the late, great Phil Hartman, Mr. Paul Hartman. Oh, Paul Hartman. Uh, I love so he Paul. gave a few. Yeah, he, he loves you. Yeah. First question. Who could fix my hair better? Kenny Hotz <laughs> or Spencer Rice? Depends who has a lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it almost sounds like a competition for an, another season of Kenny vs. Spenny or something. Paul is Phil Hartman's brother, mm -hmm. and who is again Canadian royalty, the Hartman family. This was you guys the first time you met, apparently. Yeah, you sent me a bunch of. Pictures. I love Paul. I love him so much. He's this a cool poor cat. family. You know, Phil Hartman murdered by his his wife unthinkable the, the 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 family having to deal with that children in the house that when, yeah. when it happened the fallout from someone Paul, like, that. like it, it was just just and so, phil was such a talented like paul dude. calls it a shit sandwich it is just a mess yeah. terrible if only someone could do that to spenny <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, Paul's. Uh, I've chatted with him briefly, but he's a cool cat, and uh, he's supposed to come on the show in the future. Yeah, you have to have Paul on the show. Him and his older brother. They are, you know, they. they Tell me, he grew weed. Oh my God! He is. He is probably one of the most prolific drug dealers in Canadian history. He's been in jail. He's grown. He's. He was probably the best. The, the greatest mushroom farmer. He's a scientist. He. He. You know, not only is he like an ice master at. Um, um, Curling, he's mm -hmm. a curling ice oh, master, whatever that. the hell you call it, and um, but he's one of the greatest um, marijuana growers and mushroom growers in in America. Wow, yeah, his his life story is incredible. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk. And you know that Phil Hartman um, was an incredible artist, and he drew the logo for C Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. His, yeah, I read up on that. Yeah, his his older brother, um, I think it was John, was the manager for all of those guys. So it's just funny that I ended cool. up kind of hanging with Joni Mitchell and and Paul knew some of her friends. Uh, She's your godmother, right? Well, yeah. Well, I had a. Uh, I was with her one night. I was spent a lot of time at her house and uh, you know smoking, you know butts and uh, <laughs> drinking ginger tea till fucking seven in the morning and uh, and uh, you know smoking the odd joint. And I said, "You are my fucking godmother." And I'm going, and I want a ceremony to do it. And then we had this like stupid <laughs> ceremony like where she christened me as That's her, hilarious. Uh, as I was christened as her godson. But it now her her grandson Marlon, who's a close friend and you know works with me, uh, I'm his. He's I've become his godfather. Oh, cool! So, right on. Strange things, full circle. Strange, yeah, strange really. things have happened. Um, okay, well, actually, the Hartman brothers are Brantford boys. My dad's from Brantford, yeah. too. Um, keep them coming. We'll, as In reference to curling, we'll try to hurry hard. It's okay. In this photo, it's a memory test, Kenny. Who is holding the second beer on the left-hand lower corner of this photo? Who is holding that? Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought this was a fun one. Is that Paul? Paul uh, holding? I don't, you tell me, man. Oh, is that, oh, that's, that was our old manager. That's, that's who's holding scummy, the beer? Scummy scumbag. Ripped scummy us scumbag. Ripped that's... us off. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay, not a fun question, then. No, no, I, <laughs> but you know what? Not that much. It's just so stupid. I don't know why it would burn us when, you know, we've been, we've been selling out shows like we could do it for the next 10 years, and, and we're super nice and fun and totally chill. You know, I, what do I like? I, I my rider says, you know, maybe some Jameson and soda water would be nice. You know what people's riders say? Oh, some are crazy. I yeah. know. It's like, no, don't worry, we'll show up. Like we're very, very chill. Damn. Yeah. Um. Okay. This one, or uh, you, you play it. I, I'll find the paper. In this photo, how much weed did we smoke that night? <laughs> it looks like a lot, but I actually don't really smoke much weed. But this I, night, I go, I go through, I go through little bouts of it now and then and I, I i will do like like pretty recently over the past few years intermittently every few months or so i would do a little you know micro dosing of of um 
weed oil or something, but mm. uh, it's 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 yeah, it's too crazy. Well, you can get the CBD strains that don't have a lot of THC, and you can still smoke a joint. But yeah, really, but even know. that, like I said, I just end up sitting with a bag of fucking Doritos at the end. Well, you talk about different shitty chapters, shows man. on Netflix. Um, different chapters in your life, like you yeah, were saying, right? but I smoke twenty joints a day for half my life when I was a weed dealer, blowing like you know three gram coners and rolling five, you know five paper five paper like joints cones or whatever cones yeah, yeah. and you or know cross so joints, I yeah. did I did it, you know. Which is good because I always thought that, not that I would ever compare myself to like ever, ever compare myself to like Chris Farley or, or Belushi, but because I did so many drugs and I had, you know, cute girlfriends um, and I was kind of popular as a kid, it might be one of the reasons why I didn't end up, I don't end up like those guys, like just, mm. you know, blow my brains out, you know, get into you know needles or whatever yeah because they didn't re i don't know if they really had the opportunity to do a lot of drugs and get laid when they were in high school or or before so then they so then once they get become famous i'm like i was kind of like oh done with the drugs and yeah. i was kind of sick of you know but they hit the ground running and just yeah went and, the wrong way with went, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, but i don't know i i'm i'm imagining that might no, have happened to you that's yeah, a fair yeah. theory yeah but I, I, wonder. Was, I was pretty like tired by the time i I was 40. Yeah, I started smoking weed when I was like 13. So same thing. Yeah, in me my too. 20s, I, like, I had to slow yeah. down. I had kids in my 20s, and it wasn't uh, easy to do both. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do some more. Met this girl at a party at your place. It was a, a, a blind date, apparently. And my question is, will I get laid? If you have a chisel. <laughs> Yeah, I thought the fans might like that that uh, prop from I the show. I still have that in my basement, that. the Virgin Mary statue, but my my wife hates it. So if anybody wants it, make me an offer. eBay that shit. Yeah, but how are you going to ship a eight hundred pound statue to Bolivia? Yeah, I guess. But yeah, I'd like I I would get rid of it. There's certain things that I you know I have like my kitty mug or my Russian mm. po my I wore, Russian I wore this flag. Figure. Yeah, and um, and I love them, but I know there's someone out there that wants them more than me. Mm. And I don't want to kind of, you know, I don't really want to sell them, but I would sell them if somebody, if they went to a really good home with somebody who truly loved them. Yeah. So or if you can Instagram do like an me if you want any of that stuff, any of the old props. Or maybe an auction for charity or something, or is that, that's more of a spending thing? I guess. Jews for Judas. <laughs> charity. Charity, my, my stripper friend. <laughs> my uh, stripper there was one more just nice photo of you guys. Yeah. I love Paul. And uh, I think there's just a nice thing that he said at the end that I wanted to include. It's not a question, but it was just. Yeah. I just want to say what a valued friend you have oh, been over the last years. And I love you, brother. You know, like I said, that's, they're the Hartmans. Like that family is just uh, incredible. I, th I thought I'd get you. And I'm such, I'm such a big fan of Phil Hartman. Yes. You know, he's, he's insanely he's, talented. Oh, my God. Amazing. When he stopped being on The Simpsons, it was like such a bummer, man. Yeah. Both Lionel Hutz and uh, Troy McClure. Oh, okay. He was, he's, he's, um, he's a legend. John B. from, he was the genie in, 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 um, Pee Wee Herman, too. Like he's oh, done, shit. Yeah. Google him. <laughs> like he's done so much stuff. Yeah. Well, I remember that one of his last movies, he did that small soldiers movie that came out when that I was, that was really big for him. I, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't actually see it, but, but it's okay. I, I did love him. Um, I don't have any more recordings, but I do. Spenny called me this afternoon yeah. and he finally gave me his question. So he wanted you to sort of describe the struggle you've been having. Cause according to him, you are having conflicted feelings about being mean to him on stage, but you, you recognize it's part of the dynamic. I've always, no, I've never had conflicted feelings. I've always felt bad about abusing him, but he, the truth is, you know, he can't feed his children. He ran out of semen, so they're starving. <laughs> he wants me to abuse him because if I don't, he can't make any money, and the audience will only pay to see him. In misery. To see me abuse him. <laughs> yeah. So he basically goes on stage and talks about what an asshole I am or what a scumbag, when the reality is he's actually begged me to go back on tour and, and, and do this to him. So it's really slimy on his part to kind of milk that I'm a scumbag. But hey, for hire. I'm basically just doing everything in my power to save his family, you know, from being homeless. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't really want to be mean to him. Like it's fun and he deserves it. And I, I, you know, he, he's, 
you know, when you go out and you're on tour and you're trying to be professional and the guy drinks a bottle of scotch before he goes on stage, yeah, I'm gonna, I'd like to abuse him when I'm on stage. It, it, it turns out that it's organic and it kind of, you know, some fans like it. Some fans just think it's sad and will never come back. <laughs> but at least it's different. I was going to say, they clearly haven't watched the show. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know. Um, it, it is what it is. And it's, you know, s the most primitive, simple thing and the most complex, you know, craziest, intricate thing. And, you know, I don't know if we will ever truly know what it is. And I don't know I don't understand Perplexing. how anybody else was. I don't know why anyone's still here. You know, uh, I, I do. I do because I think it's, I think Kenny vs. Benny is probably one of the funniest television shows of all time. Definitely in Canada. I concur. Yeah. And, 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 um, and then my, I think my stuff too is truly unique and has a certain diplomacy and, and intelligence and, yeah. and, and vibe and feel to it that rarely exists in a world where everything's fucking plastic and bullshit, yeah. you know, where I'm a member of the audience and people can relate like you would do what you, what I would do if you had the opportunity to do it. It's like when you watch, you know, Matt and Trey or Seth MacFarlane, you know, we kind of feel like, oh, you know what? We would do that. That's the type of show we would make if we had the opportunity to make yeah. Family Guy or South Park or, or you know, something like that. So, so we, we we have a certain affinity with our audience and certain relationship with them. Um, it's immersive artwork. Yeah, it's different. But you know? uh, but uh, it, you know, it's a lot to do, and I've been very blessed for it. Like I love my fucking life. I am so happy. I say on stage, I said, "Kenny versus Benny is just happy versus unhappy." That's that's what the show is. Uh, I don't care versus I care. Mm -hmm. You know, the, just the fact the the versus thing is only about is only for Spenny. You know, it's just to give something. It's the only thing there to make him look like to, to make him funny because he can't be funny unless he's he's, you know, in pain or conflict. It's like carefree versus yeah. erotic. Yeah. Right? So I I don't care. I don't care if I can stand up or not. I don't give a fuck if I if I can if I can, you know, uh, run farther. I I care if the show's not funny and I get humiliated. Yeah. You know. So I just use that you know as an opportunity to you know, throw them to the wolves and, and, you know, use them for bait. <laughs> but, you know, if people are like, oh, well, you don't care about standing up. No, I don't care about standing up. I care about not doing a humiliation. Yeah. I don't, that's why I cheat because I don't even care about standing up. The people that care about standing up, they're the ones who are idiots. When this show started, I thought, oh, Kenny, oh, Kenny's such a cheater. And I thought, oh God, I'm going to be, everyone's going to think I'm a cheater. But no, Spenny, <laughs> after watching a couple of episodes, you wanted him to be destroyed because he actually cared. Is it, yeah. And that, you know, and to me, he's an evangelist or, you know, some priest or just some, you know, a <laughs> shitty adult teacher who makes you, you know, moralist, <laughs> who makes you do something because that's what you're supposed to do. It's like, fuck you. Yeah, he's got some wiener vibes sometimes. Yeah, but. oh, some. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like Spenny too. He's a nice guy. He's a different vibe from you. Depends. If he, he's a nice guy, if you've got something for him, he doesn't give a <laughs> fuck about you if you're, you've got nothing for him. Well, I never pay him to come on. He's a either. bottom feeder. Yeah, but you, you never pay him to come on, but you're, you're, you know, sucking his butt, telling him, how, <laughs> making him think he's famous. So he's like, oh yeah, I want to come here because he's a fucking. I don't think I did butt sucking, but maybe, maybe. Of course you maybe do. You want him as a guest on your show, so. You know, and you'll pick him up and probably buy him lunch. The guy's so <laughs> fucking broke. He'd do anything for a Tim. Bit. I did pick him up. I didn't buy yeah. him lunch. Um, I got one more question from the guy who uh, runs the Facebook page. He didn't send a video, but uh, I'm asking on his behalf. He said, ask Kenny what the perfect Kenny Hots TV project would be now that he's older and wiser. I should say Jonathan Brown. Oh, um, well, there's a few. Uh, I, you know, I've always wanted to do, I've always merged my comedy with journalism. I just think, you know, me going out and trying to kind of deconstruct the, our, the social nature of man, which is kind of what Triumph for the Will was. To me, Kenny versus Spenny is man versus man. Triumph for the Will is man versus himself, where I try to get my mom laid, or I try to not eat meat, or I try to be a cannibal. That, that's, that, that's man versus himself. And I've never really, I, I have a little bit, but man versus nature, where I go out there. That, that was like me in the Trump rally, or I did another one. It's incredible uh, pilot I did with um, Vice and Spike Jones. And uh, it was called, well, the first one I did was called Me on You. 
And it was me going into the world to try to interview people on the street. And it's amazing. It's random. random. I have. Oh, nice. It's amazing. And I did another one called uh, All Things Human, where I go to New, York, New Orleans to find out w- why people get wasted. And it's crazy. Can anyone see these? Uh, Nobody can see them. No. I have them. I'm waiting for a special time to release these two kind of shows I have that no one's ever seen. Damn. Yeah. Some people are going to be salivating over that. I know. They're gold. Gold. They're, they're like they're years after I've done like Triumph and Kenny versus Spinny, where I'm just like I've mastered my craft and they're so oh, fucking damn. good. What a tease. I think, I think tease. Uh, to me, the, the getting an election uh, is one of the best things I've done. The Trump thing, just being being set out in like being a gonzo journalist set out in a world, you know, who ends up re- revolting against, you know, his platform, you know, like I, I went out there and they're like, Hey, Kenny, man, hang back. Don't do any new stuff because we got like a $50 million, you know, HBO vice deal. So we don't want you fucking around with anything. I was like, fuck you. <laughs> you fucked with uh, Yeah. That dare you. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, and I said, I'm going to like, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going rogue baby. <laughs> Yeah, you I am going nuts. rogue. Yeah, I went nuts, and uh, that's what I like. I want to like going rogue against myself and the world, and just but and but all for the audience, for the viewers, for the for you guys, because you deserve it. And we all deserve it, and we're so sick of the fucking bullshit. And the, I'm not trying to sell some stupid energy drink or a horse tranquilizer. I'm not trying to sell anything. I have no mandate. I've got no reason to do anything except be fucking. You know, Geraldo Jesus, Anderson Cooper for you fucks. And that's it. That is my mission is to be, you know, the funniest, most honest, badass motherfucker in the world that nobody else will ever do. And that's probably why I can never, ever do it again, because I don't really play the game that much. Like I play the game, but I just kick the board the second it starts, you know. It's like a creative journalistic nihilism sort of. Right on. Yeah. And. This has been so cool. I will ask you the last question, yeah. which is uh, our season three. Uh, if you were not doing what you're doing right now, what would you like to be doing for a living? Or what did you want to be when you were growing up? Well, f- I always wanted to be a commercial director. I loved commercials. Advertising. Okay. I wanted to be a, like an advertiser. Yeah, yeah. Like I always wanted to go into advertising. And then intermittently I would, I had like these ideas where I would start the first YouTube for advertisers where I would get, um, I would get, people to users to generate ads and they would get paid for their ads, stuff like that. Nobody ever really picked up on it, but I tried to do it for years and, and, um, and, and just be like a commercial director. Like I, I always like that. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah. I also wanted to be an architect or not, not really, but, but, you know, uh, make video games and, um, that one doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Right. Cool. Like I want to be an inventor and do cool advice. I had a, we did, I had a Kenny versus Spenny episode I probably never talked about. It was who's a better inventor. Oh, yeah? Anyway, we'd both invent something, and then we'd go to a panel of, you know, patent guys or something or and and try to... This was just an idea that never came to fruition. Yeah, and I, oh. one of my inventions was it was a, a toilet seat that lifted up, and then after about 20 seconds, a toilet seat slowly came down. Mm. So you'd never have to put the seat down again. I thought, oh fuck, I'm gonna make millions. Shark Tank or some shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but but yeah, I have a, I had a lot of inventions, and um, but to me, I'm I'm always I just always kind of being an idea guy. Yeah. That if I had friends with problems, even their dads and their moms or whatever, um, I would really historically think of a really quick problem for them and fix their problems. And I was kind of that was kind of my my thing. You think outside the box. I yeah, think that's very evident. Yeah, yeah. Well, fucking thank you, man. Thank you for sharing a drink with me and high five thank on you that. For, yeah, well, thanks for caring. I, I do love you, and uh, uh, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, I tried my best. Like tried I said, I was nervous, you. but... No, it's okay. I, I prefer being on before all the other hacks, <laughs> like Humplick and Spencer. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to see the show tonight, man. Oh, you coming? Yeah, yeah. You know what? We we I, I Spencer wants to do... Just show people videos that they've seen a million fucking times of like him with the octopus on his head. He wants to sit on his ass and show videos. And then we've been perfecting a show over the past six years. And I said, fuck it. With, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm done. I'm throwing it out. We throw out the entirely old show. So it is like probably the third time I've got this piece of paper of things I've never done. Oh, and nice. I'm doing it. So it's it's good. It's, it'll be good. But, it, but the last thing that we perfected was so incredible. 
And I wasn't going to play Ottawa again because we played so many times, but I played Ottawa because I knew that tonight I had to do something totally different. And that gave me kind of a deadline to do it. So so it is, to it is totally different. I don't know what it is. The, the good news is that every show is pretty unique and different. And I kind of, you know, Spenny wants to just do cookie cutter shit. And I want to go improv. I want every show to be, you know, specifically catered towards the location, mm. you know. Adaptable, yeah. Yeah, like well, this is why you'd be cracking great Mitsu jokes in Montreal yesterday. It was fun. I think you should pursue the solo stand up yeah. thing too as a side project because, you know, trying new stuff with the piece of paper that sounds like a stand up comedy. Yeah. Well, I was talking about, I was thinking about like, you know, Montreal jokes. Like I was saying that, you know, on my, on my way here, it's like, you know, the second I left Quebec, and drove into Ontario, I felt like a Jew that just escaped Germany. You know what I mean? It's like, we're so scared and we have to be so polite to everybody there. I'm going, you know, I'm asking like, but monsieur, pardon, uh, un, un cappuccino, s'il vous plaît. You know, it's like, we're, we're just like, we're like slaves to like the, the French and we have to be so polite to them or they, Bow down. they hork in our, in our coffees. <laughs> and then you have to tell them how delicious their goober, their goober is. Oh, your, your spit is magnifique, <laughs> magnifique Francois. It's like, oh, I, I'm, I can't believe a white Anglo-Saxon pig would <laughs> understand how delicious my spit is. You know, that type of thing. Take that Montreal. Yeah, well, I take that everywhere. That's basically the world. Well, now you're in Ottawa, which I actually have a message from you on Instagram where you described Ottawa as Washington with Down syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we could end on that. Yeah. Unless you have anything else you want to plug or talk no, about. That's no, that's it. That's All right. Well, thank so you. And I, I, I describe Spenny as Trudeau on meth. <laughs> that's even better. Okay, thanks, everybody. I love all you right. all. Thank you. Bye. Oh, man, that was fucking funny.